Leviticus 17, 14 informs us that the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Once again, scientists are finding out that the truths of Scripture are far more literal than they ever imagined. Tiny particles have been discovered in blood that are seemingly indestructible. These tiny particles are less than a tenth of a micron in size, and while they cannot be seen using standard medical microscopes, new methods of microscopy have been developed which makes it possible to see them in their living state. Image is then captured by a sensitive CCD camera and transmitted to a monitor for viewing notifications of up to 30,000 X. Under these conditions, the tiny living particles can plainly be seen against a dark background. In 1996, my family and I made a trip to Nashville to visit the Wyatts. I brought along the microscope, which at that time was somewhat portable in its early stage of development, and set it up in the basement of the Wyatt's house. One evening, Mary Nell Wyatt asked me to take a look at some material from a burial cave to see if these tiny particles were present. Without my knowledge, one of the samples was actually the blood sample that Ron had taken from the Ark of the Covenant dig. The sample was placed under the microscope, and as the specimen began to come into focus, thousands of tiny particles, summatids if you will, became plainly visible. At that time, Mary Nell, who was standing behind me, began to weep. As I turned around and saw the expression on her face, I realized immediately that the sample we were looking at was actually the sample that Ron had found to be the blood of Christ. Okay, Mary Nell's going to take the sample and uh, mix it with sterile water. And a test tube there that we that would be enough. Okay. And she's gonna take some sterile water and uh a little bit. Just just some drops all we need me now and then. Okay, so now that we've got the sample on the slide, we'll go ahead and focus into the sample and see what comes up on the screen here. particles, less than a quarter of a micron in size. The spores are maybe a half micron, and uh, but most of those little particles we're looking at is 17,000 X, magnified on the screen 17,000 times. You know, in the Bible it tells us that the life is in the blood, and there's little living particles that uh, most people are unaware that are there. This is the same thing we see in living blood. Uh, the scientist in Canada says that these things never die. Uh, the blood may dry up, uh, but these things, he says, they're indestructible, and he says they are the basis of life. Where I found the Ark of the Covenant has since been perfectly cleaned out. And the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread, the candlestick, the golden altar of incense, they are all set out as they were in the earthly temple, except that the Ark of the Covenant is set, setting against the 12 foot long and 18 foot wide or high. Yes, the tables of stone were found in the Ark of the Covenant. I can remove them with the assistance of four angels who lived in the mercy seat, which I would estimate weighs about 900 pounds of solid gold. And one of these angels told me 
to take the tables of stone out of there. He said, God wants everyone to see those. And so I took them out, backed up, stood there, frozen in place. And I, well, I just can't describe my physical state or mental state or anything else. If, if you know, I didn't have some physical evidence to prove it happened, I think I had a dream or something. But anyway, they're on a stone ledge right in the same chamber. That's where the angel put them after I handed them to him. I didn't know what to do with them. And uh, I was told that these are to be presented with the blood evidence when the mark of the beast law is passed or enforced. Now, I know everybody wonders about what it is, the mark of the beast. You've heard all kinds of rumors, stories, and all this. I'll tell you quick and simple. If you keep the Ten Commandments that God wrote upon those tables of stone, and about which he says in Psalms 89 and 34, those of you that are writing down text, you'll want this one. He says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. He spoke the Ten Commandments from the mountaintop. He wrote them in stone. And he says, nothing will change. Right? If you keep that law, you will receive the seal of God. Soon there will be a set of man-made laws. These man-made laws will require that you break God's Ten Commandments. Christ said of the Pharisees, For it is in vain that they who worship me, teaching for doctrines and the commandments of men. If you keep those man-made laws and break God's Ten Commandments, you will receive the mark of the beast. When I get to heaven, I'm going to look around and I want to see every one of you there. You can make it with God's help. Please. Don't let all of that go to waste. Please. Take advantage of that wonderful The Wyatt, but until he died, that as far as he's concerned, is the truth. Now, think about it. The blood of, if this is the blood of Christ he's talking about, 23 chromosomes from the mother and one Y chromosome that's not of this earth. And who is the father of the Son of God? God the Father. Now, you have to ask yourself this question. Is this true? In other words, are we hearing factual evidence? Did this man really see this? They say Ron Wyatt was an amateur archaeologist. I want to remind you that in 1947, shepherd boys threw a rock into a cave at Qumran to try to find their goats and they heard pottery crashing and they went in there and they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. One of the most profound archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. And they is, are as amateur as you get. There's always this ego problem where the professional uh, archaeologists didn't find it, you know, and they want to throw off on somebody like this. But this man says that he found Noah's Ark, Kent Hovind, agrees. He said he has found Sodom and Gomorrah. He found the Red Sea crossing, Pharaoh's chariot wheels in the mud. He has found Mount Sinai. He has found the grain holders down in Egypt where Joseph uh, had all the grain stored. And now he has found the Ark of the Covenant. Now I'll leave it up to you. I'm going to put it before you. It's up to you to believe it or not. I'm not saying that I believe it, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm like Kent Hovind. Until you show me otherwise, I'll leave an open mind as to what I just heard here. Yeah. Until you show me otherwise, I'll, 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 I'll keep an open mind 
I believe both of these men, Kent Hovine and, and Ron Wyatt, are brothers. These are not professional hucksters. They're brothers. And so, you know, that gives a lot of credibility as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir. Uh, Ron Wyatt said that uh, the only reason he uh, found all this stuff is because he's the only one looking for it. <laughs> and then uh, I listened to a, a deathbed confession about the Ark of the Covenant and nothing's changed about the blood being alive. Now, the confession you're talking about, look. Who's deaf that? Ron Wyatt? Right. Okay. I remember 1983, 82, 83, 84. I, we can go back and get the tapes. I was talking about this, uh, where he was, uh, where the blood went down through the crack and was supposed to go on the mercy seat. But nothing was said about the the lab work on the blood. Yeah, you know. I watched the. I saw some, uh, where they were testing the blood and they were filming them and they looked and said, "This is alive. This is blood." And, and it actually, oh, you saw this now. You're saying. Boy, but, uh, will you send me that link? I want to see that. Yes, sir, brother. I want to. I, I want to see it. Yeah. But they were all excited about this blood coming alive. It's two thousand years old. But <laughs> hey, he's alive. <laughs> well, of course he's alive. That's the blood of God. <laughs> That's what Acts twenty twenty eight says. I mean, oh, they don't. They don't. You know. There were those the people were standing there that watched Lazarus come forth from the dead, right. and, they still, and they still didn't believe. They ran back and they told their cronies. And uh, I mean, I, when I read that, uh, I hadn't been reading the Bible long. I read that. I thought to myself, Are "You kidding me? Lazarus has been dead four days, and he comes up from the grave, and they don't believe it." And this is what it says in Luke 16: "Though one rise from the dead, they won't believe him." So they have Moses and the prophets. So you know. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, what do you think? Is this something that causes you to want to dig a little deeper? All you're going to do is go to YouTube, type in Ron Wyatt, type in the blood of Christ, something like that, and you'll get all kinds of material. Uh, uh, well, kept secret. Uh, I think it's uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's 4Q267, or 264, uh, is a document, uh, is a uh, commentary on the Bible written 200 years before Jesus Christ came on this earth that said that there would be two messiahs, one would be suffering, one would be... Well, yes, they've taught that, the uh, Mashiach uh, ben Joseph and Mashiach ben David, one, the son of David, the Messiah, is the reigning Messiah, and the son of Joseph is the suffering Messiah, and the Jews know that there's so much going on about either one of them. <laughs> No, they've got the Talmud. And even with the, the Ark of the Covenant discovered by a Christian, even the blood that comes alive, they still don't believe it. How many of you have never heard anything like that before? About this blood, about the chromosomes and all of that? See, I had never heard that until just a few days ago. I'd heard about the crack and the blood coming down, but I didn't know they had analyzed it like that.